portion for this week is Ki Tetse, and it opens with chapter 21, verse 10 of the book of Deuteronomy. Let's take a look at what it says. Ki Tetse la milchama al oivecha un tano adonai lohecha beyadecha veshavita shivyo veraita Shivya Eshit Yafator, the Hashak Dava, the Lakakta Laha Laisha. When you, an Israelite warrior, take the field against your enemies, and the Eternal your God delivers them into your power, and you take some of them captive, and you see among the captives a beautiful woman and you desire her and would take her to wife, you shall bring her into your house and she shall trim her hair, pare her nails, and discard her captive's garb. She shall spend a month's time in your house lamenting her father and her mother. After that you may come to her and possess her, and she shall become your wife. Then. Should you no longer want her, you must release her outright. You must not sell her for money. Since you had your will of her, you must not enslave her. It's hard to think of Western civilization without thinking of the Hebrew Scriptures. It was the Torah, after all, that introduced the world to the ideas of universal justice in domestic affairs and restraint of arms on the field of battle. In last week's Torah portion, Shoftim, we read of a commandment that every society was to develop a judicial system that was fair to all, to rich, to poor, to Jew or Gentile. We learn from that Torah portion that there is no civilized society without due process, that vengeance and vigi vigilantism are anathemas to God. The Torah cautions us not to give full vent to our violent inclinations even during time of war. We are told to give our enemies the option of surrender. We are instructed not to be wantonly um, destructive of the environment during a siege. This week's Torah portion opens with the words, Ki Tetse La Milchama, when you go out to war. And what follows are rules of conduct for the Israelite soldier, forbidding him to mistreat, uh, from mistreating women. This must have seemed like a radical demand on the personal conduct of soldiers when war was a total winner-take-all kind of proposition back then. Even in the most uncivilized of human activities, war. The Israelite soldier was commanded to act like a civilized man. This week we observe the 10th anniversary of 9-11, that horrendous attack on America that claimed the lives of nearly 3,000 of our fellow citizens. Our lives changed forever on that date. 
And since then, we have been fighting two major wars, one in Iraq and the other one in Afghanistan. We've also built an incredibly large and complex security system to protect our country. Now, out of necessity, much of the counter-terrorist activity that occurs on our behalf occurs in secrecy. One of the greatest challenges facing all civilized nations is this. How do we protect ourselves from our enemies without becoming like our enemies? The late Emil Fackenheim, a philosopher who survived the Holocaust, wrote that a 614th commandment was, refe was revealed in Auschwitz. That commandment? Survive. Survival, indeed, is a moral imperative. But Fackenheim goes on to write that physical survival is not enough. Speaking to the Jewish people in particular, he says that we must also survive as Jews with our own specific Jewish values intact. Moral or uh, survival is a moral imperative. Pacifism and neutrality in the face of evil are not moral options, but neither is excessive brutality or uncivilized behavior. The State of Israel has felt the strain of those moral demands every day of its existence fighting, fighting for its survival, and at the same time remaining a civilized nation. America has also felt the tension of those two demands ever since September the 11th, 2001. Our prayer this Sabbath for our country must be for the wisdom to balance the moral imperative to survive with the moral imperative to be just and merciful, to be civilized human beings. Not an easy task. Shabbat Shalom. Adonai,